Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do a review of a recent book that I have just finished, which is Monster She Wrote by Lisa Kruger and Melanie Anderson. And this is a piece of non-fiction uh, and it's about women in speculative fiction. So horror, ghost stories and just all the forms of speculative fiction. I got this one as a present from my best friend and now I had finally the time to pick it up and because I found it so interesting I wanted to do a full review of this book. And I always like books about books <laughs> because it helps me discover what's out already out there and what I can check out and read next. So I already have like a very long TBR but this book made it even longer and there are a lot of writers in here that I didn't know or some of them that I did know but never really uh, thought about reading but then I read more about them and I was convinced to read it. Um, one of them is Anne Radcliffe. Uh, I have heard of her name and she's like a very big name in speculative fiction. She uh, actually is one of the like the founding mothers of speculative fiction but I never read anything from her and uh, after reading this I'm quite excited for her book which is uh, The Castle of the Dofo. Uh, I don't own it but I think next year I will try to read it. It sounded very interesting. Also, one of the books that I have purchased after reading this one is um, is The Castle of Otranto uh, by Horace Walpole. So this is not a female writer. It's like the first book in ghost stories and in uh, gothic stories, gothic novels. So um, I wanted to read this one and I don't know if it will be my thing, but I think it's good to read what's has been already written in the genre that I like reading and like one of the first books out there because you never know if you will like it or not for sure before reading it so um, it this one is written in quite a very long time ago in 1764 so it's a quite an old book but there were also a lot of other biographies that I like to read like uh, from Mary Shelley I still haven't read Frankenstein uh, fully I just started it and never really finished it but after reading this book I am quite excited to pick it up again and also I never knew that Mary Shelley's life was full of like controversy and also um, a lot of sadness but also a lot of love for art and writing. She had led a very interesting life and um, I actually didn't know anything about her. So after this book I'm quite excited to read her work and to get to know her more. And I also like the biography of Elizabeth Gaskell and Shirley Jackson which is one of my favorite authors out there. And I, I do have a team that I like in horror which is uh, The Haunting of Holmes. Uh, and I see that I like, I think I will enjoy most of the writers in that category. So this book is divided in different categories. We have the founding mothers, which um, is like the start of the book. And it starts out with Margaret Cavendish, I, or she's also is known as the Mad Match. I have never heard of her. I have never read anything from her. So it was very interesting to find out who were like the first woman out there to write in speculative fiction. Then, of course, Anne Radcliffe, uh, Mary Shelley, and um, there are a couple of other names that I didn't know anything about. Then we have The Haunting Tales with Elizabeth Gaskell and some other writers. Fernan Lee is also a new discovery for me. Then we go into The Cult of the Occult. Uh, all of those names were new to me. <laughs> and the woman who wrote The Pulps, so Pulp Fiction. Not my fa favorite chapter, but very interesting to read about Pulp Fiction and how it started out and what it actually means to uh, have like a full fiction book. Um, it was an interesting concept but I didn't know any of the writers in here and um, that was one of the points of this chapter that full fiction was written on in that time on very cheap paper so a lot of those writers didn't survive the time. Uh, their books actually literally didn't survive and some of their stories which were collected in all the journals and in all their collections um, those stories survived and like one of the biggest bigger names of the time period but a lot of the writing also got lost unfortunately and a lot of the journals published more um, male writers and not female writers so um, yeah we have lost a lot of good writing probably and that's unfortunate uh, on the other hand of course it's like the test of time uh, and it's not always fair and obviously we would like to keep more of our past but often uh, a lot of the things that we find now important 
would not be there in like a hundred or two hundred years because it just cannot beat the time. Um, so that's yeah, that's a lot of female writers face this problem in that time period. And then another the chapter is the haunting of the home. So here we have Shirley Jackson, uh, Dorothy McCardo, I I don't know not that one, uh, Daphne du Maurier, Toni Morrison. Uh, I have seen a book by Toni Morrison, um, uh, which is beloved. Uh, talked about a lot in the booktube community, and I always like wanted to read it, but it wasn't on my <laughs> like top 10 books to read now uh, but after reading um, the chapter in here about her I was very excited and I think I will try to read it next year as well because it, it just sounds very interesting and totally something that I would like then we have a chapter on paperback horror uh, which are also like this big <laughs> event in uh, literary history uh, out of sudden uh, pap paperback books came out and that made it possible for a lot of people to read books and especially uh, horror fiction came alive in that period uh, again because it was easier to print, cheaper to print and a lot of people could buy it so that was very a good time for horror um, and then we have the Neil Gods which is Anne Rice and Susan Hill Sarah Waters, Angela Carter. Angela Carter is also someone that I really like to read soon. And then the last chapter in here is the future of horror and speculative fiction. And then it's defined like the new weird, uh, vampire stories, haunted houses, apocalyptic stories and the serial killer, which are also quite po popular. So overall, if you would like to read more female writers and if you're into horror, I think this book would be perfect for you. And I gave this book like four stars, uh, as I can remember, and it's one of the most interesting non-fictions that I have finished very quickly and also enjoyed. However, there are some things that I didn't like about the book, which I want to discuss in here. I didn't discuss it in my... Um, reading a wrap-up video because I think this, these are two minor things that stood out to me. The first one is that this book contains mostly European and American writers. Towards the end of the book they mentioned some contemporary uh, Japanese authors and uh, some African-American authors and uh, other countries as well. However, at the beginning of the book when we talk about history of females in uh, speculative fiction they only mention American and European authors. Which is unfortunate because I think uh, there are also more authors to find out there from other countries. So it would have been interesting to read about those women as well. So I don't know why they made the choice to only focus on Europe and America. It's not really explained in here and it doesn't say anywhere that this book is should be focused on that. So I think maybe it was a choice that they made but didn't really explain. Uh, because I cannot believe that there were no other female writers out there in speculative fiction in other countries outside from uh, Europe and America. Uh, and another point that I didn't like was that um, obviously this book is in the like in the feminist tradition. They talk about female writers and the hardships that they had to face in their time period and how difficult it sometimes was to publish or to get published or to have the time to write because in the past a society would pressure women a lot uh, to uh, keep their interests and time dedicated to other aspects of life and not to writing it was seen as a more like a, a, a male thing to do write a book publish a book um, and just have the time to write obviously these women were pioneers in their time period and a very like strong and eccentric kind of woman to be able to do such a thing. A lot of them did publish under male names to kind of beat that limit for women to publish books. So obviously this was discussed in the book and I think that's really good to show the picture and uh, to acknowledge the difficulties that women faced in that time period. However, all the biographies kind of ended or started with and she was a strong female that was fighting the patriarchy and I think maybe you could uh, like address all of this in the introduction and it's not really uh, necessary to tell this in every biography with every writer that you mention in it um, because sometimes it, it didn't really fit the context of the text and then it ended in a sentence like this and I just I thought that was unnecessary um, because they already introduced 
this problem really good so it was mentioned like quite a lot and i thought it was a little bit redundant and didn't really add to the context or to more information about that specific writer so to wrap it up i would recommend this book i really liked it and i think in the introduction of the book the most strong sentence uh, that I, I think already sets like the pace and the and, and, and the atmosphere for the book is when writing is an off-limits act writing one story becomes a form of rebellion and taking back power and I think this sentence is more powerful than just saying and she was fighting the patriarchy of her time uh, with every biography because it that doesn't really add to the context of what she actually was doing to do to do that uh, but this sentence is very strong because writing for a lot of female authors out there was a way of rebellion, was a way to show themselves and just to be able to do something that they like. And one of the female authors that they mention, like the pioneer of uh, speculative fiction, Margaret Cavendish, bravely wrote about science and philosophy, two subjects then considered purely of only male minds. So I think the introduction is very nicely written and it's good at introducing the value of this book. So let me know in the comments if you have read it or not and what your thoughts are on this book. And if you're still thinking about it, if you should buy it or not, I hope this video was of any help. <laughs> so I will see you next time and thank you for watching. Goodbye.